Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean, Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be, across the nation, around the world. I am your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my very first ChadDeckard.com podcast show. My shows will cover how offline and online marketing and communications can grow your business, as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurialism, and travel and adventure. So thank you for checking out my show. This is my very first show, so bear with me as we begin this adventure together, exploring many great things to come. If you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do through iTunes to take it with you wherever you may want to go, or by just visiting my site, chaddecker.com, and filling out the short subscriber form on the homepage. Since this is my very first show, I'm not going to cover any specific topic other than to give you a little background on what my purpose is for doing this show, and a brief history of some of the things I have done professionally in my career that would be related to the purpose of this show. So let's go ahead and begin. To begin with, obviously, like most young children, I was one of those children that dreamed of aspirations of making a lot of money and being rich and living in some big castle one day. So I started off like most kids do and started a lemonade stand. So uh, that's how I actually got started and knew that I had some type of entrepreneurial spirit within my blood. So I did that quite often, and as I got older... and I thought of more things and did some all kinds of little things throughout uh, my childhood from selling candy and and uh, uh, cinnamon and spearmint, toothpicks, and providing things when people didn't have it and they wanted it, sort of impulse items. And as I got into high school, I started uh, to do t-shirts and painted shirts, and I'd wear these cool things that I would create and only to have people actually come up and ask me where I got it. And I'd tell them, obviously, that I created it myself. And, you know, obviously they wanted to buy one, so I, I would create one and sell one to them. And uh, as I moved off into college, my entrepreneurism didn't cease to exist. I had saw a classified ad one day in the, the college newspaper, and uh, only to contact a company that was looking for a local representative to publish an insert within the magazine and get distribution for the magazine locally. So, uh, you know, the only way that I would be able to get that distributorship is if I sold at least $1,000 for the first month to make it worthwhile for the company to invest in me. So obviously, you know, they sent me the materials and I went out and went knocking door to door on businesses all around the university. And that's where it all began. I started to learn and think like an entrepreneur. And as I set up on that long road, which has probably been about 24 years now, if not longer, uh, since I've been really doing it more professionally, uh, you know, I, I was successful. I sold, <clears throat> I believe, about $14,000 in advertising just for my magazine alone in the first month. And so uh, they decided to publish because, you know, we had to have the material in the sales end, 60 days before school even started in the fall. So I, I kind of only had a short deadline, but produced a lot, and that's what made them uh, jump uh, at the opportunity to work with me. And the thing that I ran into real quickly was all the ups and downs that it takes, you know, when running a business. And one of my you know downs was the fact that uh, most businesses weren't sure if I was going to be around long or whether I'd published the number of copies that I said I would. So I realized that I needed to get in an alliance with the school newspaper. And so I approached the school newspaper a few weeks before, you know, the fall session was coming. I find out that the school newspaper is not publishing anymore. And so I, I go to the dean's office and I inquire about what happened with the newspaper. They told me that uh, they wrote an article and I saw it. It was a front page, you know, and it had a picture of the dean of students and they're representing him as a Hitler with the mustache and everything and it really upset him to the point that he told the people running the newspaper not to come back and that Central Florida was no longer going to have its own newspaper. So I was like, hmm. And I don't know what came over me but the first thing that came to my mind was I want that newspaper or ask the question because it doesn't hurt. And I asked, so would you mind if myself or if I found other students willing and able to publish that newspaper, 
to release it to us to be able to do so. And they basically said, go ahead. And I was like, wow. So I had met these two other fellows that were interested in kind of running their own little things like business slash, you know, sort of magazines, little things. And we decided that we were going to run this newspaper all together in and, and my magazine. So we all had kind of our own projects, and then mutually we would run the newspaper. You know, we all went to the, uh, the lawyers and got a, a release form contract signed, and the, uh, uh, the university signed off on it and uh, couldn't believe all three of us really had a, a good time partying that night because of the fact that... Here it is, a, a university gives three students uh, a half a million dollar business to have for their own, and it didn't cost us a dime other than the money that we spent uh, consulting an attorney to draw up a contract to release the uh, newspaper from us. So that was the first big learning lesson I ever had in business and negotiation. The, the great opportunity that, I guess, set me on my path to be a professional entrepreneur. So as time progressed, uh, you know, I, I continued to publish both magazine and newspaper in college and learned a great deal working with national and local advertisers at all different levels, also working with the Orange County Economic Development Commission's office in downtown Orlando. After college, I moved on and really had these dreams and aspirations now that I had this success at such an early age. Uh, bear in mind that, you know, we took the newspaper from a half a million dollars annually to 1.1 million annually by the time that I had left as a senior. So, you know, in, in the period of the two years that uh, I had a vested interest or, you know, in the, in the newspaper, you know, we went from a half a million dollars a year to selling, you know, one, I think it was one million the, the, the year after and then 1.2 million my senior year. So I had established a lot of ground, almost anybody and everybody that you could possibly sell to in the local area that would be targeting a college student to consume their product or service. And there's still room to grow, obviously, but I got pretty comfortable. I had a little crew that I was training and, and you know, for the future. And I knew I didn't want to stay in Orlando. So like most kids do, they, they head off to the big city. And I went to Atlanta, Georgia. And, and in Atlanta, Georgia, you know, I found it really difficult to get your resume even looked at these major corporations. It was basically like if you tried to go through the front door, your resume was put on a stack of 700 others waiting in line to get the opportunity to even speak to somebody even on the phone. And you know, the funny thing is, like I think, I always think in a very different perspective than most people. So I thought, of what's the back door way to get into these companies? And the first thing that came to my mind was that a lot of these companies, I had read in an article at one time, use the temporary agencies and these are not just like any temporary agencies these are you know probably higher end temporary temporary agencies because they needed educated people to use programs and you know during this time it was a big transition into personal computing so a lot of being you know i would say competent in you know a lot of the microsoft products and how to use them and what your competency level was was critical for you to qualify to be in these types of positions because there were a lot of the time they were executive assistants or, you know, basically, yeah, assisting somebody who was a high-level executive, which I had the opportunity to do when I worked at uh, CNN, BBDO, and uh, Time Warner. I didn't get the jobs directly going through the front door with them because it's almost literally impossible without a direct connection but I had gone through the back door. And every time as a temp that I went in and worked for one of these co companies, they wanted to hire me. Or I had a choice, if they didn't hire me, to be subcontracted to work for them. So indirectly, I would work from them, but really for myself. And thus, you know, after a period of time of working for all three of them, I sort of was like, no, 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 cool experiences but just not for me. I'm better than this. I can make more money than this. I'm, I'm very capable because, of, you know, I saw the people that worked above me. I'm thinking, yeah, they're older than me. It doesn't mean there's more wise to me. Maybe they have a little bit more experience, but it seems like I'm, a lot of my ideas or a lot of things I say are, are being used, and this person's actually moving ahead because of it. And that's where I came to the question, like, how long is it going to, for me to be that guy? 
And when my superior said it would take about 10 years, I said, I don't have 10 years. And that's when I finally decided that I was going to permanently leave corporate America and set out on my own, which I had already started months before I actually decided to quit. I wrote a couple manuals and books on marketing. I was able to place classified ads in the USA Today and around the country, Thrifty Nickel, you name it, all these different popular nationally distributed magazines. I would buy classifieds and sell my manual, you know, for twenty to forty dollars depending on the time of year. And I had sold over ninety thousand myself through these classified year uh, ads over about maybe two and a half, three, four year period, somewhere in there. And as I was selling that, I was obviously it had funded and given me the opportunity to learn new things. And one thing leads to another. It seems to always do that throughout my business uh, career and from that I moved you know from this mail order type of company into realizing that I'm collecting all this information you know I became more of a list manager so I sold that da data and that's how I started getting into data not only that I was because of my generation as an Xer we came through right at, at the inception of the internet becoming more of a uh, public utility or vehicle that was highly distributed and respected for what it could do and the potential of the future of what the internet has become obviously today and what it will be tomorrow. And so being at the very beginning of something really exciting and new that's going to change the whole world as we know it and we've seen, uh, it was an exciting time. And so I really started to start mailing people individually uh, my sales messages and then I was really like I need to do this more often and I need to do it automatically I need to have a schedule and then not only that I need to sell them more products and that's how it all started for me going online and I created my first internet company called Info Generator in 1996 I remember it's July and my partners and I set out to build this program that not only could we use but we could share it with others and license it and know that everybody would need what we have to be on the internet. And we knew that, you know, we were going to make a lot of money and we were going to make, you know, change, you know, the world in our own way as we saw it. And because it was such an early time, there wasn't a lot of choices. So there was only like maybe a half a dozen, if that, in, of, of what we did. And other companies included AWeber, you know, the Constant Contact, Get Response, Eye Contact. And some of them came, you know, really early on like us, and some of them came later. But as you can see, they still exist today. So the idea that I came in and my first idea when the Internet first started revolved around list management and, and mass marketing and email marketing and, and being able to drip a message and follow up and, and nurture that lead and be able to mail it with you know, special offers and getting them to come back and return to your site or knowing who visited your site. It doesn't matter. You have a million hits. Who visited your site? So that's where it all started. And, you know, we built Info Generator. It took up about a year. And within 18 months, we were completely out of debt. We owned everything. We had nearly 35 machines under management on two racks in Salt Lake City. And we had almost 32,000 paying customers paying us 25 to 50 bucks a month to access our system. It was called Vaporware. We also created, and what you know, I guess you could say the, one of the first viral marketing programs. A combination of having a two-tier affiliate program, refer three, get it free. And on top of that, every person who came in started using our email system to follow up with their, keep track of their list with their clients. It was automatically turned on by default, discover a revolutionary email marketing system at the top and the bottom of the email. So everybody read it, whoever got the message. And not only that, we paid the people to have that, that link on there. So that's what got so many users coming in so quickly. You know, it's kind of like that FedEx commercial, you know, back in the 90s where, you know, it was like tick, 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 tick. Tick, 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 and it totally went out of control. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like that. It was an amazing ride. So I, I did that until about 2003, just a few months before the Can Spam Act. I got out of the email business, and I, I thought I'd get out of it for good. I was just tired of walking on glass. And 
looking over the abyss, you know, I, I looked at bankruptcy once or twice, but survived it because of the fact that I uh, just had good service. I stayed on and I had top game. But uh, at any moment, you always had the fear that someone was going to pull the plug. And here's 32,000 people giving you their credit card at 25 bucks. You know, it's a qu three quarters of a million dollars. And they could charge back up to six months on you because you, at the time, they didn't have a way of you know, checking the three-digit number on the back of the credit card or signing off. So it was kind of a in-the-air kind of charge that we kind of overlook it, but we want to try this out and see this experiment and see what it will turn into one day like it has today. And that's how it was, the Wild West. At any g given time, depending on what your last six months sales were, you basically held that or floated that kind of money. And so that was like $4.25 million. And there was three, four times during that period of, you know, running the system where I looked right over the abyss and didn't know where I was going to go because one ISP would cut me down and they just didn't understand because there was no law or leg regulation as far as protecting me as a business owner just providing a service not doing the spamming or any legal activity myself it was the people that supposedly I was enabling but I wasn't enabling because there really was no rule it wasn't illegal so tell me what I need to do in order to correct the problem so that we can work together and make this work. And so I dealt with that. It just got really tired some to beat against the, the wall until something was done. And so I moved on from there. And, you know, what I moved on from there, you know, as I was coming up, I invested into real estate. I got my license. I, I ended up starting a real estate company called homesforeducation.com. And in that business, I had cracked the tax code and learned as becoming an agent where the opportunities were real fast. And as an, uh, as an internet marketer and list manager, I realized, geez, you know, the money's being a broker and being able to be an internet marketer at the same time and generate leads around the country and have a network of realtors that were ready on demand distributing an automated lead system to them of somebody who was potentially interested in buying a home in their area of expertise. And thus, we would command a 30 to 35 percent referral fee to that agent being a broker from, say, Florida to, say, Nevada. And if they closed a deal, and say the average, I would say, commission at that time during the real estate boom was probably about $300,000 house at three, at seven percent be a $21,000 commission or $10,500 commission on one side of the deal. So take 30% of $10,500 and we're talking what, $3,100 commission for a lead? And that was my pitch, was when I came up with this concept learning the business that I was like, you can't give an incentive on the HUD statement, you have to give it behind the scenes. I found out that you could put it on an IRA or a 529 tax deferred education fund so us as the intermediate broker party in the middle of the transaction getting a referral fee can do that and thus we got around the the, uh, the regulation of incentivizing a real estate transaction. It was a very clever, very unique idea that my partners didn't even believe me at first and when we had it checked out by legal they were absolutely amazed how I'd figure out something like that when no one else ever thought of anything like it ever before in real estate. And so once again, I, I was able to reinvent something of a completely new thing within a genre or a business vertical. And that's what I've done throughout my life. So we proceeded to do that. We were successful with it, but at the same time, we didn't make a lot of money with it uh, because of the fact that we, by the time we built everything out, and through trial and error, it, it came to the last few months before the real estate bomb, and it just didn't make sense, and things weren't clicking, and our costs were high. It was kind of like we got started, it started going, and then we got ahead of ourselves only to find out that the money wasn't getting to us like we would have liked to have seen it, and thus it was not worth it for us to continue. So we ended up you know, selling the idea off. And uh, today you'll see that idea, uh, a hybrid of that idea at youpromise.com, which is a, uh, an education fundraising system for p uh, kids across America. And I think it's a really good one when you buy gas or groceries or whatever from certain name brands. They pay you back a certain percentage points that go toward your child's education in the future. It's kind of like having free coupons on top of coupons. I guess you could say it's like power couponing. 
<laughs> so I'd check that out. And then uh, American Airlines Credit Union and then several other credit unions and other incentive programs I've seen across the country have hybrids of what uh, I came up with years ago about donating a percentage of a real estate transaction to an incentivized situation. From that, I moved on into data management and lead generation. I launched a couple of affiliate networks and created a number of lead gen, uh, successful lead gen campaigns. A lot of it at that time dealt around debt, a payday, subprime market, uh, you know, like I said, real estate, and travel. We were very successful delivering anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 know, quality leads that were bought, not returned, on a daily basis for, for some time there. Margins were very low, but it, it still was a great living, and you know I was able to live in a, in a different country, like Spain, for several months as a guest of a, a really great family. I had some incredible experiences there, meeting more incredible people, because that's one thing that Info Generator uh, enabled me was because of being so early on in the internet, I pretty much had a who's who's list of clients. You know, if I opened it up, you'd be amazed. You know, some of the you know, top New York best-selling writers are on there. Uh, some, you know, top speakers and entrepreneurs, and, and some people even today that have big companies and su successful companies, and even within my own industry, um, and still know who I am. And sometimes when I go into the shows, they're like, "Oh, I remember, you know, that, you know, you said this and that, and you know, 14 years ago." And I'm amazed. That was, I, you know, from that, you know, the experience of setting up, you know, affiliate networks and working for large organizations on a consulting basis, running data, monetizing data, working with you know TV, mobile, internet traffic, I mean exit traffic, you name it, all types of SEO, pay-per-click, everything, all-encompassing. It, it's been very interesting and the world's constantly evolving and I'm that kind of person that's always looking ahead or trying to find the next new opportunity and being one of the first people to really learn about it, understand it, and start to execute something successfully because the early bird always gets the worm. So that's the kind of individual that I am. And, and the reason why I have started this website, chaddecker.com, and this podcast or recording series that I'm creating now is because I want to be able to give back. I want to be able to share my knowledge. I want to be able to communicate and have a community of people, of like-minded people, who can contribute also to the content that I create and make it evolve even more than what it is that I put out on the surface. Be able to work together, come closer together and and finding, like I said, a mutually beneficial type of relationship from one another, whether we really work together and make money or whether we're changing uh, ideas or content with each other. That's the reason why I've created this site. That's the reason why I said I, I created this this podcast. You know what I plan on doing here moving forward is having uh, you know my solo podcast like this, and usually I'll do you know tips, tricks, and techniques. I'll have other types of shows where I interview an individual. I'll have other shows where I actually invite several people to be on what I call a roundtable call and we will discuss issues. So I invite you uh, not only on this show, on YouTube, or on my any of my social networks to post a comment of what you think, or on my website in particular, because it's, I want to draw people in. And be it that you are connected to me on Cloud or Foursquare or you know LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, I want to hear from you, and, and so, do, as, so does everybody else, because we all contribute to learning from each other, and we're all on stage creating this big show. I find it really fascinating. I think you know, getting more people involved makes it more, you know, just more rewarding. So I invite you to uh, and contribute uh, whatever you can. And uh, so I'm going to call it quits here on this first first show. And I'm going to leave you with, I guess, basically knowing how to subscribe to my show. If you want to be able to know when I publish this show or any latest articles on any of the material topics that I'll be covering, uh, please proceed to either iTunes and look for my uh, RSS feed uh, connected to uh, iTunes to be able to download this show and be able to take it with you, listen in the car on the way to work or 
You can also subscribe by visiting my website, chaddeckard.com. That's C-H-A-D-D-E-C-K-A-R-D.com. And be sure to subscribe to the blog's update. It's free, or the RSS feed, and you will be sent uh, any updates. I guess that's about it. So I, I appreciate you uh, coming and visiting me and uh, checking out my show. I think that uh, you'll find that as uh, we move forward and more shows to come, that uh, there'll be some really great information and content. And if I can just provide, you know, that golden nugget or some kind of inspiration or whatever it may be to give back to somebody. I just want to be able to project my energy out there and really make a difference for any individual or organization that uh, might need something that I can offer uh, and give them that might spark you know, whatever it is may be that they might find the success. That's about it. Have a good night. Have a good evening, wherever you may be. Across the nation, around the world, this is Chad Decker signing off. Goodbye now.